brothers, I've been uh, kind of like uh, by reading my personal reading, and I see some. I I, I got to a Bible verse on uh, Flos Peter, and also another Bible verse in John chapter one, and uh, the Lord is opening my eyes about something that I didn't know, maybe or maybe I didn't understand, and I feel like I still didn't. I don't understand enough that it's about grace. And I know that maybe grace sounds simple, but at the same time, it's very profound when we meditate in the scriptures, you know, what it talks about. And uh, I want to start with a verse in the book of John on chapter one. And I, I don't want to try to end the Bible study on flow spirit to see about grace. So if we can go to the gospel of John in chapter one, and uh, we can read from verse 14 to 16, but I really want to make an emphasis of verse 16, but just to get the context. Please read. Okay. John 14 through 16. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. You know, can you read 17 too, please? Verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So the Apostle John says in verse 16 that we, we receive grace upon grace. I think on the King James, it's a little bit different. But when you look at Mr. Darby, he says that it's like a grace upon grace. And the way I see it, brothers, in Spanish, you know, when I, I read it in my Bible, it's like layers of grace. The, the law, what we receive when we believe in Jesus Christ, is like this grace is not just the beginning of accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior, but it's something that we grow in grace. And also the Apostle Peter when he's the last Bible verse that he says on uh, another Bible verse, well, Second mm -hmm. Peter 3.18, his last verse of the second epistle, he says he's ex he exhorts us to grow on grace and also in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But Christians need to grow on grace. I've been saved for 24 years, almost going to 25 and I still, and I'm pretty sure you guys know, every every Christian still needs to grow in grace. We keep growing on grace every day. We need to, the Bible exhorts us to do that. But over here in the book of John, we say that from his, uh, how it says in verse 16 again, please? And of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. From his fullness, from Jesus Christ's fullness, we re-raise this grace upon grace. And uh, I would like to read a few verses on, on this same chapter just to see a little bit about Jesus that we know already, but it's good to kind of like to remind us ourselves, you know, with the scriptures. If you read in verse 1, just, just 1, 1, John 1, 1. Okay, first John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I have a little hard time to say the, the, the word, word. <laughs> so... Over here, tell us that in the beginning was the war, and the war was with God. But if we read verse 14, it tells you who is this war, or what happened to this war. Can you read verse 14? And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld. Okay. So the word became flesh. So we know that he's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the word, and the word in verse 1 says, that at the, at the beginning, he was uh, he was he was Jesus from the beginning. That means that he never had a beginning. He always been Jesus from the beginning, and he not only was in the beginning before the beginning star. Let's say before the creation, and this one's more back than Genesis. Like if we read Genesis, Jesus was before Genesis. Uh, that's a meaning that Jesus is God, and is what the scripture says. The he is God. So 
And at the end of verse one, telling is telling us that Jesus is God. So Jesus was in the beginning. In the beginning, He created everything. He was with God alone. So we in the scriptures we know that also the Holy Spirit is God. So Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God, and God the Father is God. So we get to know. We know because we say if in the, we have the Holy Scriptures, you know, the Scriptures teach us about the Trinity, you know. So we understand that. This is not a subject about today. But Jesus, he's God. And the Scripture says that from his fullness and what he is, we take this grace. And we read in the Scriptures, we find out that everything in him subsists. He's in control of everything. So he, as God, he controls everything. Even when he was in the cross and when he died as a man, he always was alive as God. He cannot die because he's God. And he always had control of the whole creation. So everything subsists in him. The Bible also tells, when we read the Gospels, that God was pleased on Jesus. His life without sin a perfect obedience to the Father. So, who he is, on this Bible, on this uh, verse 16, says, he, from his fullness, from who he is, we take this grace upon grace. So, it's very important how we got this grace. How is that we got saved? And how is that what the, what, uh, the scripture teaches about grace? Where is coming from? And he says, from Jesus, from his fullness, we take it. So it doesn't depend on us. And it's good to understand that. And I'm pretty sure everybody knows that. This grace comes from God and is from Jesus, from his fullness. So it doesn't depend on us. So we have it to our disposal anytime we, we need it for everything that we need. And I, I would like to read verse 14, if you can read uh, verse 14. We only read half of the part, but we'd like to see the, the, the last part. Can, can you read the whole verse? Yeah. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So now Jesus, who is God, is full, full of grace and truth. So everything that we need, we have in, in him. And you know that Jesus, the Lord Jesus says something in John 15, and he say that we cannot do nothing separate from him. So he's like our source, our life. And also Paul, and, on the, and sometimes uh, uh, Paul says that Jesus was our life. Jesus was our life. So he's the source of this grace and the source of our life. And I would like to see about grace. Now, let's start from Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 5, sorry. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. On this verse, we read that we are justified by faith. But not only we justify by faith, we have... We have like the entrance. We go into this grace by faith, by believing in Jesus. God put us inside this grace. And it's good to understand this because we want to read a couple of verses that tell us what grace do. And sometimes I think also as Christians, we need to be reminded of what grace do because sometimes we don't, we don't take advantage of grace. Can you please read uh, Romans 5, 1 and 2? Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. He says we have access by grace. You came out this. We have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand. Into this grace. So we come into this grace by believing in the gospel. Sometimes people don't, understand, don't, don't want to believe the gospel. And also, sometimes it's, it's, it's some fake Gospels that says that you need to be saved by doing good deeds. And it's something different. It's not what the Scripture says. It's Gospels not based on the finished work of the cross and the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's Gospels that, that really depend on men to be saved. 
And Paul writes something to the Galatians that I would like to go see. We're going to maybe come back uh, to this book later. But let's go to, to Galatians chapter 2. The Galatians, some fake teachers went in and tried to teach them that they had to fulfill. They, they tried to do the, they had to do the law. They had to obey the law and to be able to be justified by, by, by fulfilling the law. And Paul writes on Galatians chapter 2 and verse 21. If you can please read it. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for in righteousness come by the law, then Christ is that de is dead in vain. Over here in my Spanish Bible, it says, no desecho. Desecho means like when you throw something away, like in the garbage, you know, desecho. Sadly, some people do that with the gospel. They don't accept the gospel. And by doing that, they also not accepting grace. So now that we are inside grace, we read that on Romans 5, 2, the book of Titus. If we go to the book of Titus, chapter 2. Paul also tells through writing to Titus that grace, grace is not just about being saved. That's kind of like the first truth, you know, that we learn when we are saved. The word grace saved by grace. That we didn't, we don't deserve salvation. And it's what really grace means, is that we receive what why we don't something what we don't deserve, God give it to us. We don't deserve grace. It's, it's, God doesn't give us what we deserve. There is condemnation in the lake of fire. So if we read in Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So everybody has access to the salvation. It's for all men, not only for the church. You know, every man in this world can come in inside this grace and be safe. Can you read all the way to verse 15? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. So the Apostle Paul told that grace is going to teach us how to live a holy life in this world. And not only live a holy life, also wait for the Lord to come and take us home. So when we read the whole Bible, the scripture says that the whole Bible is a... Is, uh, it's inspired by God, and it is, it's an instrument that can be used to help us grow spiritually. But when we look at the whole Bible, the letters that God sent to the church through the apostles, we see there is 21 letters. On those 21 letters is what where we can find grace at, at the fullness, like also in the gospel, like we're reading on, on the book of John, but especially on the letters it's where we get what God orders to the church, what God wants for the church. So it's good for us as Christians to read the letters, to understand the letters, because it's where we can find what God wants for us and how one, God wants us to react to every situation in our lives. So Paul write to the Thessalonians, if we go, if we go to to First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13, something that is very special. Because when we read the letters, or we read the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation, but especially the letters, we're not like wasting our time when we're reading the, the word of God do something special to us. Can you please read verse 13? For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but at it but as it is in the truth, in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. So the apostle Paul says when the Thessalonians receive it, receive what Paul teach them, he said they took him as it is in truth, the word of God. 
So now we got the letters, all the letters that the apostles sent to the churches, and those letters are the word of God. But the word of God does something that in my Bible says that it works. It works in, in, in the heart of the Christians. When we read the scriptures, we keep it in our heart. The Bible will do some work on us. We have in other parts of the scriptures that say that the, the word is alive. So how important is for us to read the scriptures and especially the, the scriptures where it talks about grace because grace teaches to live a holy life. But before that, you know, the, we, we, when we read in the scriptures, we learn the scripture says that we are sons of God. And that's something very important. Look, let's go to Romans chapter 8. Christians are very special in this world. Christians are very special. And sometimes we don't understand that. The magnitude that we are children of God. Can you please read Romans 8, 16? The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So we are children of God. Imagine the creator of the whole universe. He is our father. We are children of God. And the scripture says also that we've been adopted. And also the scripture says that we are sitting in heavenly places with Jesus. The position that the Christian has is in heaven. You know, also if we go to Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20, it tells what is our citizenship. So it's good to understand who we are. But meditate on that, because sometimes we know that, but it's good to meditate on this truth. We are a children of God. We are sitting in heavenly places. The Bible says that we went to the cross together with Jesus. We are crucified together with Christ. We, were, we went to the tomb with Jesus. We resurrect with Jesus. And now we are sitting in heavenly places with Jesus. We don't have to die to understand that we're going to heaven. We are already there in position. In practice, we're here on earth. God leaves us here. But in position, the Christians, every Christian is in heaven. And also the scripture says that we are complete in Christ. We're not lacking nothing. We are blessed 100%. Every spiritual blessing. So Christians are accepted in the beloved. We don't need, we are complete in Christ. You know, it's on one Bible verse that really helped me a lot when I was young in the faith and it's a bible verse in hebrew chapter 10 i think it's verse 14 if i'm mistaken that says that we are made perfect with one sacrifice sometimes christians or at least me when i was in my early christian life i i feel like i was i was looking at me the way i see with my own eyes and i was not happy but when the Lord showed me how he saved me, he gave me peace in my heart. And I was not too much focused on me, but I was focused now on God. Like, focus on how, who he is and what, what he has done for me. What he has done for me. And it's what Christians need to know, need to learn grace. What God has done for us. All of this is grace. We didn't deserve to be sitting in heavenly places. We not deserve that. We not deserve this Bible verse where it says on verse 20. Can you please read 320? That we are citizens of heaven. We don't deserve that. Philippians 3. Yeah, Philippians 320. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for uh, for the salvation savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. To me, it's a little bit hard to understand this word conversation, because to me, conversations is like talk, talking one another. But in my Spanish Bible, I don't I, I really didn't see how Mr. Darby says or on the Greek, but he says that we're citizens of, of heaven. We we are from heaven, we're not from earth. So and also, another thing that God did when when he lived us here, he 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 keep us here on earth when he saved us. He did a miracle, he did something very special. Can we go to Colossians, the next letter? On Colossians chapter one. And verse 13. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. 
translator. For us, the word translators is uh, in my Bible is like he he moves us from one place to another. Maybe it's the same in English. So he moves us from being slaves of sin, the power of darkness, where Satan can also do whatever he wants with us, to the kingdom of his son. So now here on earth is a kingdom, and is the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all the church, all the, the true believers are on that kingdom. So we're from heaven, citizens of heaven, and now we are on this kingdom here on earth. So it's good for Christians to understand the greatness of this. So let's recap a little bit. We are children of God. Okay, children of God. All that implies that. The scripture says for us to be holy like he's holy. Is what the Bible says. Uh, we read in Titus chapter 2, the, the grace teaches to live a holy life. To live for Jesus, to live for God. So... We are here on earth, we're from heaven, so we're not from here, and God has put us on this, if we want to make it like a circle, you know, like a, a kingdom that belongs to Jesus. So we are different than other people, people who are not safe. So if we belong to this kingdom, God has some rules. And it's good to see this, and grace tells us about this, and it's what I'm going to go, I want to say Talk a little more. We are on this kingdom of Jesus, his son. And God teaches through grace how to live a Christian life. And I want you to pay attention to something. Let's go back to the book of Romans. I was, I'm working on the translation of the book of Romans for Bruce Anstey. And really has helped me a lot. You know, to understand more the book of Romans. And we also study the book of Romans in over here in Mission. And if we go to the, uh, the book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 1, the Apostle Paul starts with a question. And this question is, if we keep saying as a Christians, can you please read Romans 6, 1? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Okay, so that's not understanding the greatness of our salvation. It's not understanding the gospel either. Because Paul is teaching the gospel in the book of Romans. And part of the gospel is to know this truth. That we are already like being saved from the dominions of sin. God doesn't want a Christian to live like somebody who is not from the kingdom of God. Like somebody who is not from the citizen of heaven. Like somebody who is not sitting in, seven, in heavenly places. You know, God wants us to live like how grace has put us in, in, you know, on the position that we are. God wants us to live every day. And look what Romans 6, 14 says. Romans 6, 14, please. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. I like, I, I like this word under, under. Sometimes we read the Bible too fast, and it's better to read it slow. Uh, you know, for me, it's, it's better to read it slow. Because every single word has a meaning, and it's important. The Jewish people was under the law. For us, we've never been under the law. The Gentile people never was under the law. But the Jewish people was under the law. What, what that means, under? They had to obey the law. So in Israel, if a children was born, they had to circumcise him at the seventh day, uh, at the eighth day, I'm sorry. And they had to go all the rules, fulfill all the rules that the law says. And you know that nobody can do it, but they was under. So they had to obey the law, uh, you know, the best that they can. But now for Christians, it says that we are under grace. So I want to pre I want to kind of like talk about that. Under. That means the grace, now that we are moved or, or transported to the, the kingdom of Jesus, we are in the kingdom of Jesus. And we are under grace. So you, we need to know grace. We need to persevere in grace. 
we need to read more and more and more and learn about grace because grace is under us. Kind of like what, how the law was to Jewish people, grace is to Christians. Now let's go to back to Romans chapter 5 to see something else. So on, on what we just read on Romans 6.14, the only way the same will not have control over us is if we are under grace. So Christians have been put on this under the grace, and now Christians have the power to say not to sin. Okay, so the Christians can do it. They, somebody who is not saved cannot do it. But it's good to understand that we are under grace. It's not that I can live my life whoever I want. I, in this kingdom, is, is Jesus is ruling, if we want to say it this way, because a king is supposed to rule. So Jesus is ruling on the, on the church through grace. Grace is under the Christians. So let's look to Romans 5, and let's read about verse 20 and 21. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might, bound, might abound, for where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. You say verse 21 says, the way the sin reigned. So sin reigned, that is kind of like we can learn how it was from Adam and Eve, and we'll be all the way, you know, till. I would say the end of the millennium. Um, the Lord in the, in the millennium is gonna is gonna rule with with uh, justice, and people will still have the power of sin, and people who re who sin against God will die. But sin rules over over people who are not Christians. Sin rules over them, and over here is making a comparison. If you read carefully, it's a comparison. Can you read again verse 21, please? That sin hath reigned unto death, even so my grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So this comparison, it says, just like sin reigned from Adam and Eve on all the, the people who don't believe, and, just, and let's say used to reign on us before we were saved, the same way grace reigns now on Christians. So now that we've been moved to the kingdom of Jesus, we are under grace and, and grace to reign on us. So it's, we, we need to pay attention to grace. And, and the Apostle Paul says on, on the verse that we read on, on John chapter 1, that from his fullness, from the fullness of Jesus, we receive this grace. And this grace is grace upon grace and upon grace and upon grace. So let's see a few examples about grace, okay? Uh, I would like to read, uh, if we go to, to Hebrews chapter 13, we are exhorted, we have to be careful with our hearts, or hearts are sometimes deceived. And the heart, you see what happened to the Galatians? The Galatians went to the law, and they was, looks like the flesh like Sometimes, you know, men may commands like the Colossians, you know, the, on the Colossians, some people went in and tried to teach men, men commands. And sometimes also some people want to go to the law. So the heart is like, we have to be careful with our heart. We want to make sure we want to persevere in grace. And look what Hebrew chapter 13 and verse 9 says be not carried away with divers and strange doctrines for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace not with meats which not which have not profited them that have been occupied therein so over here we have an exhortation for our heart to be it says established in in my bible it says afirmar afirmar is kind of like something that gets a good foundation you know what I mean? Something that stays solid and a good foundation, a firma, something very, let's say if you want to build a new house, and first you need to compact this, maybe the soil, before they start de de making ditches and they start putting the foundation, a firmar. So 
Over here, we have an exhortation for our heart to be affirmed on grace. So we already read that we have, we already entered to grace by faith. Now, and also we talk about 2 Peter 3.18, God wants us to grow on faith, on, on grace. And now it's good to have our heart strong in faith, like have a good foundation on grace. This is not going to happen if we don't read the Bible. This is not going to happen if we don't have no time to read the Bible. We need to make time to read the Bible. Every, every day, that, that's, that's our food. We need to make it a priority. I remember that I used to have a job that sometimes I had to go at two in the morning, three in the morning, one in the morning. It was very hard to read the Bible in the morning. So I read the Bible in the afternoon. Well, sometimes I was very tired. And I read a little bit and then I go to sleep. So it was hard to read the Bible in the afternoon. But I've been able not to work that way for the last 14 years. So it's a pleasure to wake up in the morning and in the morning make time to read the Bible. Make as much time as you can, you know, to be able to, to hide your faith in, in, in the scriptures. You know, the Holy Spirit will give you how to divide the word of truth and be able to get the most of that out, out of the Bible, even if it's the book of Genesis or any book of the Bible. But it's, it's very important for us to understand the letters. I always tell the brothers when I travel to South America, I like to take my Bible and take it from Romans. And sometimes I go to Revelation chapter 3, and I put it, and I say, how much is this? It's very little. It's very little. Christians are supposed to be experts on the letters. Because it's what the will of God is for the church. Yes, we, need, we can be experts on the law. I'm not saying that. And I always tell that to the brothers. The Holy Scripture is, is good. Read the whole Scripture. But it's good to understand the letters. Because it's, what, it's where, where the Lord, what God uses to change our lives. Especially like what we read the, in First Thessalonians. The, 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 the Word of God works on us. So it's, un, it's good to understand. Sometimes if it's a young brother, or let's say a brother who is young in the faith, can maybe read the Old Testament and get confused and thinking that he has to be under the law. So it's, it's good to for him to understand grace too. That way he don't get as, like go out of the way with the scriptures and, and uh, not understanding it the right way. So if you understand grace, you will be able to understand the, the whole Bible better. So... On this, and what we just read, so the scripture says for us to have our heart affirmed, affirmed in grace. Now let's go to 2 Timothy. Paul exhorts Timothy to do something that in my Bible is a little bit different. I was looking in the English Bible and also it's a little bit different. But in 2 Timothy chapter 2, can you please read verse 1? Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Okay. In the original, the Greek, it says to get, to, to put like a new, like, let's say like a new clothes. It doesn't say it that way, but I want to try to explain it. It's two words in one. In Ephesians, we're not going to go there, but Ephesians 4.24, it says to put on... The, it doesn't say that we took, we put the, the new men, the new men, but in John and Mr. Darby says that that already happened in the past. God put us a new man. So that word on the Greek of putting on, and also on the book of Acts 1a, where it talks about that we will receive power when we receive the Holy Spirit, when the church receives the Holy Spirit, when the apostles receive the Holy Spirit, they will receive power. Those two words are on this. On this verse together together so you got me <laughs> like i said it's a little bit hard for me to under, to explain it but those two words are together is one word if you go to the greek you can see the two words together so what paul is telling timothy is to let me see the, the note that i have here bros i'm sorry to 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 put the power to put the power that is in grace. You understand what I'm saying? Grace is available for us. Grace is available for us. 
and we are under grace and also the grace should reign on us and grace has power let's say grace has power because the scripture says that sin will not rule over us because we're not under the law but under grace so this power that grace has Paul has tell, tells Timothy, put it on. Or take advantage, take advantage of the power that grace give you. So if we if we live in this world and we we don't understand this, that God wants to God give us the power to say not to sin. You know, we read also in Romans 8 2 that Jesus has already. Uh, keep you from the law of sin. So we had the part, we, Jesus, he's the one who helped us in, to, for all not to sin. But it's good to understand this Bible verse on, on uh, 2 Timothy 2 1. Paul tells Timothy an exhortation to use, to take advantage of the power of grace. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians to see in practice this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 9 and 10. Please read. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God, but by grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So Paul says, you know, I, I, I have worked a lot, but it's not me. Who've been doing all this work is grace the work on me. So it's kind of like the same thing that Paul tells Timothy: put on the power of grace. And uh, in other Bible verses, like in Colossians chapter one, Paul says to to the to the church of Colossians that he worked very hard, and he he worked with the power of Jesus that was working on him. So grace, grace gives us the power. To preach the gospel, to serve him. You know, we're not, we're not, the apostle Paul says that we're not, uh, how you say, competent. 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 You know, when Paul went and teach the Corinthians, he says that he was uh, with a stumbling, or how you say, like a, a temor y temblor, like he was scared, kind of. Scaring and, and uh, shaking, you know, if I want to translate it literally with Spanish, scaring, shaking to teach the Corinthians, you know, but God gave him grace. And he was there 18 months, 18 mm -hmm. months, and, uh, and established that church. So God wants to use us, every one of us, to preach the gospel, to serve him. And he used his grace to make us competent to be able to serve and do his will. So what we have talked to now, because I want to go to the last Bible verse, right? Remember I told you guys that I was meditating on my daily read, and to me, to know that the, the grace has layers, grace upon grace, is something that is hard for me to understand. And then I was reading in First Peter, another thing hard to understand, I, I saw. If you, we want to go to First Peter chapter 1. So what we say so far, grace teaches that we got a new position in Christ and tells that we belong to the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ and we're not from heaven. So God or the Holy Spirit is open our eyes so we can understand who we are in Christ every day, especially when you are a newborn, when you've been saved for, a, for not for a long time. Maybe for many of you guys, you guys have been saved many years. And all these, you guys are already, like, is the ABC of Christianity. But the, the great, when we come into grace, God teaches what we are in Christ. Everything that he has done in us. And also, he teaches that he has rules. We cannot continue in sin. He wants us to live a holy life. But also, he teaches that we we cannot do it without Jesus. 
the he's give us the power to say no to sin. But it's good to understand that we have all this in our disposal. Why is the Christian sometimes they fall in, in sin? You know, they maybe they don't read the Bible and they start maybe drinking, they go to fornication, adultery, things like that. Why is the Christians can do that? Because they're not taking advantage of grace. Yes, they save, but they don't read the Bible. They don't want to get profound on get to know who they are in Jesus. But when a Christian knows who he is in Christ, in, in Christ and knows what the demands they get wants for him, he, he by reading the scriptures, he started learning how to live the Christian life and understand that he cannot do it. Another thing that I remember when I was young in the faith, I remember that I was I was like I was uh, experiencing Romans seven very strong, very strong. And uh, for maybe the first year that I I was safe, I got, I feel very bad in my job and in my you know my life. I have a fight inside of me, you know, kind of like what Galatians says. The flesh is against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And I remember that I have a war inside of me. And uh, a brother read to me a Bible verse in Hebrews chapter 13. Maybe we can read it. We can come back to First Peter in a little bit. In chapter 13 of Hebrew and verse. We can read verse 20 and 21. I was trying to fight the flesh myself. And I fail every day. I fail. And every day I say, Lord, I'm crucified with you. And I want to live my life for you today. And I fail. Maybe a co-worker made me mad and I fight with him. <laughs> Something happened. And I feel bad, you know, because I fell. And when a brother read these two Bible verses, I understood that I was the problem, that I was doing it myself. Can you read verse 20 and 21? Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. In this verse 21, I don't see God saying that I will be able to do his will. doesn't say that. He says that Jesus will do the will of the Father inside of me. When I learned that, the next day, I had to learn to have peace and relax and, and just depend on Jesus. And it's something that has to be by faith, by faith in the scriptures, you know. And this is grace. This is grace. They even to do his will, Jesus do it through us. There is not something that we do it in our own strength. I was doing it on my own strength maybe for months. I don't know, maybe a year. And it was bad. I feel so bad. But it's good to learn that Jesus wants to do his will through us. It's kind of like he wants to use our body as an instrument. So for him to live his life in us. It's what Paul says in Galatians 2.20. I'm no longer living while Jesus lives in me. So let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1. When I read this Bible verse also, I was like, what? More grace. So grace is now only for here, for her. It's for the whole eternity. We want to receive more grace when we go to heaven. So I think we need to make time to understand more grace now. You know, maybe we want to be able to enjoy it better in heaven. So can you please read 1 Peter 1.13? Wherefore, 1.14? 1.13. Uh, okay. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So over here it says for us to... To, to stay strong until the until the until the end, yeah. But it says that it's a grace that is coming in the future. This grace is not right now, it's for the future. So you see how if you connect first uh the gospel of John, chapter one, and verse uh, 16, how we have grace 
upon grace. We already look at a, a few things of grace. But now over here in this verse says there is another grace that is coming when Jesus come for us. It's a future grace. So you see how grace upon grace, upon grace, upon grace. So we are blessed, brothers. We are blessed. And, and I want to tell you that I don't understand. I don't think I understand it enough. I don't, I think I even, I don't understand it enough and even to give this message because it's, sometimes it's hard to, to, to explain it. You know, to explain things that are not too clear yet. So it's amazing how God has put us on this, his kingdom of his son. And we are under grace and grace should reign on us. You know, and if, rain, if grace reign on us and we allow grace to reign on us, the grace has power to use us. Maybe to preach the gospel, maybe to, to do many things for the Lord, to live a life for Jesus. And uh, grace also keeps us away from sinning, to be like slaves of sin. So I think we need to study more about grace. This is what the Lord put in my heart, brothers. And uh, I hope it's a, a blessing to your heart, just like it is for me. Now, Brother Chewie, you're going to need some grace because some of these brothers are probably going to have questions and comments for you. <laughs> I need the grace of God, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Uh, thank you. It was a wonderful talk. Um, got a question. Are there times when we can't show grace because things have been taken too far? I mean, for example, like uh, what happened in the first Corinthians epistle, you can't show grace all the time, can you? You know something, brother? I think is we can see grace on First Corinthians, and especially let's say First Corinthians chapter five. Grace, let, let's let, in the book of the Proverbs, it says, "If you love, you shall, you shall, you discipline him." So sometimes we can. I remember I was in a Bible study one time when I was a Baptist, and a brother says. The first Corinthians chapter five, he was like, it's no love. It's no love on, on, on first Corinthians chapter five. And a brother say, that's love. That's love. When, uh, when, uh, when uh, somebody sin, or let's say your children sin, you have to discipline your child. You love him and that's why you discipline him. So the, the first Corinthians really is, 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 is love. Because if God didn't love the Corinthians brothers, you know, we'll leave them just to keep going the wrong way. So, and also it's a love for us because that letter is for us too, because it's milk. Paul tell the Corinthians that he, he was not able to give them like a solid food and because they was not ready to take it. So he gave them milk. And without first Corinthians, will be lacking a lot of knowledge. So I think, brother, there is, you know, grace is not only to know that we are in Christ, that we are blessed with all the spiritual blessings. Grace also tells not to, not to go against God because then we want to have the government of God disciplining us. So I, I think, you know, maybe other brothers can help us. There. I think they have more knowledge than me. But uh, the whole, the whole, you know, the letters talks about the grace of God, and and I think grace. We need to not see grace only like forgiveness and be safe, because grace is not only that. Grace also, you know, teaches how to live a Christian life. You know, so grace is bigger than just salvation. It's like we read in Romans chapter 5, verse 2. By faith, we got we enter to this grace. But when we in, we understand that if I sin, let's say if I commit fornication, I will be cut out of fellowship. And that's good for me. 
so I can repent. And also grace teaches to be restored, like Second Corinthians, you know. If that helps, brother, with the answer, and maybe other brothers can help. Yes, it does help. Uh, I was also thinking of, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the talents that sometimes the rewards didn't kind of match the actions, but that's grace. Sometimes it's surprising, a bit like a shock that changes things. Well, I think that's a very good answer, Chewy. Uh, in Hebrews 12, we read that one of the privileges we have as being the children of God and being able to call God our Father is that he, he trains us, he, he chastens us, as they put it in English. And so that's a privilege. And uh, we read in the Psalms, <clears throat> sometimes it's hard to define grace uh, in a few words. And uh, I think you've done a good job in, in laying it all out. There's a verse in the Psalms that says, God is for me. He's for me. And I think, as you say, in 1 Corinthians 5, in Hebrews 12, it's the love of God acting for me in grace. God is for me in all that he is. So I think, it, I think it's a good answer. There is an expression that uh, people use. Uh, I've heard it many times in ministry in English. Um, referring to when the Lord comes, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, you know, uh, at the rapture. And they say, the day of grace will be over. <laughs> and I, I never liked that, that way of saying it, because after we are gone, as you know, God will unfold a, a wonderful story of grace with the remnant of Israel. You, you read the picture or type of it in Genesis with Joseph revealing himself to his brethren. Uh, it's hard not to be touched by that story. But that's the story of Israel recovered. It'll be a wonderful story of grace. So even though we are recipients of the riches of his grace, as you say, and in the epistles, we learn about the glory of his grace, yet still there's more grace left, and he's going to show it to the children of Israel through a remnant of them, and then it'll flow out to the nations. So it's wonderful to enjoy the, su the supreme blessing that we have, but God has more. <laughs> he has even more in store. Uh, and he's going to pour it out on his uh, beloved earthly people. So. I've enjoyed uh, more recently uh, the fact that mercy takes into account my failure and God's riches are more than willing to be poured out uh, to bring me into blessing. But grace really is the heart of God at liberty to show forth, as you've said, Chewy, the, his fullness. This is what he's full of. And this is what he lo has longed to pour out for all eternity. And so, really, even in the eternal state, God is, he's going to be all in all. It's going to be his liberty to show forth what was truly always in his heart uh, towards us without limit. I just enjoyed the fact that that grace, it's not meeting me in my need, although it certainly does. But the point is, it's the fullness of his heart longing to bestow on me uh, the riches of 
of that which is within his heart. It's not something that I I have to uh, implead. It's not something that I even uh, would consider uh, normally or naturally, but it's what has been in God's heart for all eternity. And, and it is his delight to pour it out. I think we can understand be better in um, First Timothy 2, where Paul says that God wants everyone to be saved. He's full of grace. You know, and Jesus is full of grace, and he wants everybody, everybody to be saved, you know. That's the love of God. If the prodigal son had been allowed back in the father's house as a servant, it would have been mercy. He didn't deserve that because he wasted half of his father's wealth. He didn't deserve even to come back and be a servant, but it would have been a mercy. But of course, as Doug is saying, the, uh, the robe the best robe and the ring and the shoes is, is uh, answers to what his heart always was to his son in grace. So, so I think if I've understood grace is where God places in our heart what's in his heart. Um, that is to say, it doesn't mean we always let people off what they've done. It's more we would do to them what God would wish us to do. And, and give us the power to do it. Well, we read in Romans 8, 28, when let's say 29 and 30, is that God wants to make us to the image of his son. So on our uh, relation with other people, you know, God wants us to, uh, to act like Jesus, you know what I mean? And I kind of like act like Jesus, about well, Jesus to live his life on us, you know what I mean? And because that's the only way, you know, Christianity is not an imitation of Jesus, but it's the life of Jesus on us. So just to have the liberty to live his life on us. So, and I think people will be able to see grace also to, you know, on our, on our uh, where we interact with them, you know. And I think on a from my own experience that's that that's really been really helpful because um I've often found myself um persecuted or put down or trampled on as a Christian. But it doesn't mean I just have to turn the other cheek all the time. Sometimes it, it would come to a point where God would rather that I speak up for um what's right and uh so it it, it is as you say living through the power of, of it um, as Jesus would, would want us to. On Romans chapter 12, I remember when I used to work with, a, I own my own business now, so I don't have to deal with a lot of people the way that I used to. But when I know that it's hard, it was very hard for me. Uh, Sometimes my co-workers even write down stuff with black markers in my car. And uh, uh, sometimes I had to leave the, let's say we are on break room eating and they start talking very bad. And I think they did it on purpose. So I had to, to walk away. And sometimes they go outside and fight with me outside, like, like talking very bad to me. It was very hard. It was hard. Like, I think working in a regular world for a Christian is very hard. And uh, I remember that I had a co-worker. That he was very mean with me. And uh, one time I arrived late. I used to be a crane operator. And I arrived late to the yard. And he took apart his front wheel, like the bearings and everything. And he cannot put it back together. And I'm a mechanic. 
So something inside of me, I was tired. I was very tired. I needed to go home. It was maybe like seven o'clock at night. Maybe I've been working 14 hours. I don't remember. I was very tired. But something inside of me, you know, like kind of like the conscious, the, the Holy Spirit talking my conscience, want me to apply the scriptures. And he was very mean to me all the time. And I put it together like in five minutes. And he changed. From there, he never gave me a hard time. Never. He was very nice to me after that. And if you look what Romans 12 says. Maybe can you read? Verse 17 to 21. Well, like I say, brother, Douglas, it's, it's, it's hard. I'm not saying that it's easy, but the Lord gives us the power to do it. You know, like if we really, we, the Lord, he can make you fulfill what the scripture says. Can you read 17 to 21? Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as light in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto warmth. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heat coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So I think, you know, the scriptures is so rule, you know. And we had to obey the scriptures. I'm not saying, like I say, I failed many times, but I failed. Like, and maybe I keep failing still. But when I used to work with a lot of people, I was not safe. I was the only Christian in, in the in the company in where in the branch where I was working for. And it was very hard. It was very hard. I rem I think the person who write down in my car some an ugly note with a bar black marker. I think I know who he was. In a few days, uh, that that person lose his license and lost his job. He got fired. I think no. He was doing cocaine, I think. They did a drug test, and he lost his license and lost his job. See, he was a drug addict. So it's hard. It's hard because they, are, they belong to the devil. You know what I mean? Like they, the devil, they are under the devil, you know, and the devil can use them. But one thing, brother, is that the Lord allows them, whatever they do is for our own good. And we have to have faith on that, faith in the scriptures. What the Lord allowed them to do to us is for our own good. And you know, the Lord says something. The one who loses his life will find it. Is what the Lord is doing on every one of us. Every day we lose our lives to find the real life. The, the life of Jesus in us. And I think that doesn't have any price. When you want to compare, you know, our life to live our life where we don't have no pain or maybe everything goes nice and smooth. <laughs> or to have a life where Jesus is the one who lives his life in us, you know. And and Jesus suffered unjust. So God wants us to do the same. We, we feel like we had to experience some things the way that Jesus experienced, you know. I remember one time I was having a hard time with a brother. <laughs> and... Uh, this brother was a little bit unjust. And this was a brother. It was not somebody who is not safe. And another brother told me, you know something? After he hears me telling him what I, what was happening, he told me, you know, Jesus suffered unjust, like without being just, you know, like, like now he didn't deserve to, to suffer. And when he told me that, I closed my mouth. I knew that I should not say nothing. You know what I mean? Like God... If he suffered for us, why can I suffer, you know? Uh, and I've learned also in those circumstances that if we pray to God, sometimes God will take it away from us because we can't bear it. It's not for us to do something. God, God sometimes does it for us. 